Right. So I'm up now. Um, I was just getting some cup stuff done. I'm like on time for a change, which is new. I'm like historically like five minutes late to streaming. Trying to be better about that. You're gonna see this cable occasionally. Um, I'm waiting on a extension to be delivered today, so hopefully that'll happen before it gets too late. Okay, so I'm gonna start casting some of the stuff um, for this upcoming run of oh, this guy. So this is like a mix of um, test parts, and but this is like the general color scheme, not the orange of the final figure. So I'm going to start doing, um, I'm going to cast the torso, the pelvis, and then the, this connecting part here, oops, this um, hip joint. So I'm going to start casting those things today. I've been doing a lot of work on other parts and whatnot, and I'm trying, I need to start like doing actual production. So I'm gonna work on that. Let's see, is this actually streaming? I've been away for a while and now I feel like everything's like weird. But it looks like it's all good, so, okay. So I'm going to start with the torso first. Um, I think I use like 50 milliliters for this. So I got to, these are going to be black. Well, a shade of black. And then the pelvis part is this. So this will be this will also be black, I think. So I have these three rods I insert into the mold to uh, control for making sure that these are not getting filled. I, in the past, I've used silicone for these and had um, just, it was just part of the mold. And them being so thin, you know, there's issues with like seat, it's seating correctly and um, so I, I figured I just built these into the mold and it's been a little bit easier. It's a little tricky to get like the mold halves together and make sure that it's aligned. I'm just taking out some like scrap from the, the last cast. But um, it gives like more consistent results, which is, which is nice. So I gotta turn on my fan real quick. Kind of ventilate properly. So I'm just gonna dust these all with mold release before I start doing like the other prep. I'm actually gonna take the headphones off while I do that. <laughs> coat of this stuff on all the surfaces like the resin won't really stick to the mold but it helps it just helps with like you know releasing it so it it comes out a little bit easier you have to do a little less prying and the headphones are really just so I can hear the music I'm playing so I don't need to have them on Alright, this stuff all needs to dry, so I'm just going to set it aside. 
for now. And then I think I have to look at my rough calculation for um, resin amounts. I think this is like 10 and this is 50. So I'll do 60. Uh, well, I haven't cast them enough to have like precise numbers. I have like estimates. So for these things I'm using task 9. It's a two part. All my stuff is two part epoxy. Um, but this stuff's a little bit stronger uh, than like a lot of the smooth cast resins. This is for like more high impact things and um, I don't know, factory stuff. Is there a Rosillas? Sorry. That's no, probably mold release. I need 30 mLs of this, and I'll add my color to it. Dude, that one's probably good. Um, so, originally, I don't know, I'm like, I go back and forth between I want to do like this, like smoky black, like smoky colors, so there's like some transparency. Obviously, it's easier to do like opaque stuff, but um, I like the transparent. It just looks nicer. It's more fun. Over, that'd be pretty swell. So until I figure out like exact um, amounts that I need, I usually uh, order like the molds. So I'll do like this, this, and then this. So if I run short, I can just not cast the Y part. All right, so, um, do I want to make it translucent? Yeah, we'll do translucent. So let me grab the die. space is kind of small so I have everything like precisely placed it's like Jenga every time I'm working here all right so um, oops of course it's like overflowing doesn't usually do that And this, this die is like, it'll stick to everything, stain everything, so usually when stuff like that happens, I'll just get rid of this piece because if it touches anything, it just like spreads like a virus. Um, okay, so then this stuff goes a long way, so I'm only going to use a little bit to start with. Like you know, less than a drop, and see how that color looks. See how fast it like spreads. It turns dark really quick. And basically just stir it until there's no streaks. 
be like a consistent color. So I'm, I think there's a little bit of lag on the, the iPad, I think because I've got two things running. So if I don't see a comment immediately, like just bear with me, I'll, I'll see it, you know, once it pops up on my screen. smoky. That's kind of what I want. So I'm just going to leave that. Because it's like, you got to go really light if you want like these really um, pale colors or you want like a slight color because you can't like, um, it's like mixing paint. Like once you mix the paint, you can't like unmix it. You know, if you put too much of like a dark color in, it's not gonna, you can add all the white in the world, but it's not gonna make a huge difference. So, I just have the one palette knife, so I have to clean it in between uses. Now I try not to, all this like part A in the yellow bottles, that's the catalyst. So I try not to pour it out until I absolutely am ready to use it. Cause like, it starts to set up. Well, it, it like starts to react to the air as soon as you open it. So, I try to, you know, just keep it off to the side until I like really need it. in front of the camera um, these don't need to be like perfectly dry they just need to be like close so then I'll put the molds together get these ready I gotta prime the air compressor which I guess I'll do now so sorry if that's a little wild it shouldn't be too long till that's full Actually wondering if that's not enough resin. Look at my twister now. It's 30. I bet it's not right. Um, I'm gonna go up a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit more part B and then mix that up. I'm just gonna go what I measure 60. My old calculation is um, 30 by 2 so I'm probably short this might actually be oh hey uh crowdy <laughs> sorry um uh, I don't actually know how to say that um, this is uh various borderlands soundtracks like from the game series 
So it's all the like scores from the different games. Cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's all um, Borderlands music. Um, I'm like, I really like the franchise, and um, so it's like a sub theme of like the stuff I'm working on and like the gimmick on my stream and stuff. So my like, when I have to like step away, my be right back is like claptrap and um, yeah, and it's uh. There's no, like, um, this is from one of the DLCs. I, I'm not sure which one it's from, because I haven't even played all of them. Okay, so I'm going to increase this by 10 mLs on both ends. Just to be sure. I'd rather be, like, over than under, you know? Hey, maybe. Yeah, it does have kind of like a mystical uh, tone to it. I'm not, I don't even know which DLC it's from. Um, actually, I guess I can look. It's from uh, Borderlands 3 Bounty of Blood. should shut off shortly. Sometimes it's still running this long. Right, that should be good. That should make sure that I've got plenty of resin. Yeah, it's all up on Spotify. Um, so if you have a Spotify account, it's, it's all up on there. Okay, uh, why is this not full yet? Oh, I know why. Whoops. I left the vent open like a dummy. <laughs> so it's just like spewing air in in and out the vent. Oh well. Dumb moment. Okay. So that should actually turn off here shortly. And I'll uh this this mold's a little tricky because I gotta not snap these off. So I'm gonna replace these with metal rods eventually when I get around to it. So there's a couple like little keys that these fit into. So I have to kind of just get them in there and then it should be good. Okay, so we're gonna go in left to right order when we actually uh, cast these. So then we're ready for this stuff. Yeah, this is a little this thing will sometimes dry, crystallize closed. Okay, I guess that vents not totally. So I'll use these these um, channel locks to crack the seal. Cause I spilled this stuff once and it made a huge mess, like ruined the clothes I was wearing and the carpet, because there was carpet in the room I was in. Not great. Okay. Uh, we're gonna do 40 instead of 30. Wait, did I not shake this up? I didn't. It's a little goof on my part. Uh, I'm like distracted myself. But it's good I cut it now because it's an easy fix. It's been sitting for a little while, so it's probably separated slightly. So I'll just slap the cap back on it and give it a little shake. That should be good to go. so I'm always trying to keep it under control. Okay. 
this stuff's all like time sensitive so once you start mix, mixing stuff and um, you know it's gonna like react whether you are ready or not so you kind of have to be sure you've double checked all your all your uh, steps before you start all right so now we're gonna do 40 right so that's the second line from the top now it's like it was like too uh, transparent and I was like oh yeah I didn't shake this thing it's always a little a little cloudy So with those done, um, I'm just going to put those into a shared vessel and then mix them up. And I have a syringe I'll use to inject them into the molds. syringe ready so that's my injection syringe um, that's what I use to mix it scrape it out with that and then I need a bigger vessel which will be this one okay so first I'll put this is a little bit thicker so I'm gonna add this first it's actually a little little darker than I would like it to be but that's fine. I want to try to do a little bit more like pre-mixing of colors. It just hasn't been like um, optimal at the moment to do it. I've got a couple other things I'm trying to wrap up. And there's some dye that we missed. everything I need is ready before I start because um, it's not you only have a few minutes once you mix these together so these are my two cleaning things and then I need a fresh towel to clean out the inside of the syringe so I'll use this one hey what up downer energy Pale skin tone goop. This stuff. This is the um, part A of the resin I'm going to use. I like just getting ready to mix them together. So this is all Task Nine um, smooth on resin. This is what I use for the all like the hard parts, the things that like don't, shouldn't flex or anything, or need to be like more durable. So this is like the torso, um, the hands and feet. Basically, it's everything except the upper arms and legs. And then the armor and stuff like that. So if anything needs to flex a little bit, it's all 60D. And then all the more rigid stuff is all Task 9. And then this stuff is just... Uh, this is 99% alcohol that I use to clean stuff. It's just super dirty and cloudy from like being used over and over again. That's all sediment. That's all resin sediment at the bottom. Now this stuff is turning like gray, but once it cures, it'll be that translucent black. It's just when it, you mix it in like the liquid form, it looks like this, or it gets like cloudy. I got a 
the sides. I forget what the exact pot life is on task 9, I have to look. I just always assume it's like a few minutes so that I always kind of work at the same pace. Um, I like 326 because it has like a long pot life. But, uh, um, task, is, there's like 10 different variants of task. Um, 9 is like, tra it's meant to be, you can tint it, so that's like why I use it. Um, there is a black one. Um, there's like a, a bright white and an off white, and there's like a few different um, consistencies depending on like the properties you need. It looks like it's not mixing together. I wonder if this stuff is like going bad. Yeah, well, we're just gonna shoot it and see what happens. I've had this bottle for a while, so hopefully it's not like on its way out. Because it's still like half full. Oh, I should get, get going before it like really craps out. You just, I'll just kind of hold it like lightly to try to prevent. Yeah, see it like this. This uh, silicone is really soft, so it tends to leak around the sides, which is really annoying. Shit. It's like okay, it is filling, so it's fine. It's just um, this is uh, Mold Star 15, so it's like not really my favorite. It's too soft and it's not a plat cure, but all right, so that's good. Yeah, it looks like I mixed up too much. I thought I was gonna only need um, whatever. It doesn't matter. So I guess I'm just gonna make some extra parts since I've got resin that's gonna get used no matter what. I want to make some uh, like container boxes. So that there's less of this, like, what is this? I forget what this even is. Doesn't matter, it's getting filled. Yeah, I got way too much resin here, which sucks. So I'm just going to try to fill some molds as fast as I can. So grab another off the side here. Come on. Sometimes I run out of time and that's just what happens. Drop these in the tank. I just I had to like stack them. I usually don't run this many molds at one time. But since I overestimated my resin, I just had to, you know, use it because it's gonna it's gonna cure any no matter what now, so Okay, so that's done. Uh you were saying 
pretty much exclusively use 325 finals, 300 for tests. Uh, intentionally make bones that are quick to fill. <laughs> I'm just impatient. Oh, I totally get that. Um, I mean, I'm. I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm impatient. I kind of have just gotten used to like the constraints of how I work on this stuff. Yeah, I've seen stuff like that, um, the inner racks, and I've seen like um, tanks that are mounted sideways, so you can like stack more stuff in them. All right, that should be good. It's at pressure, so I gotta clean all this stuff up now. Uh, let's see, we need a little cup. Honestly, like, this is probably the most tedious part of doing, like, um, injection casting, is all this, all this, like, cleanup. Because, like, I keep the syringes until they, like, break down. So I, I clean them, and I don't want to, like, scrape all this resin out later, so I do it all while it's uh, liquid. And this, what I'm doing here, this is just to salvage the stuff that's left over. Because then I, I use it for um, when I'm making like reservoirs or if I need like, you know, a scrap piece to like start a sculpt or use as a base or whatever, I'll have, I'll just pull scrap out of my bin and use that. Because then it's like, you know, I've got, I'm putting that resin to use in some way. Alright, that's a mess. So I'll clean that up in a second. Let's see, where's my thing? I think this is a bad one. These pipettes, I just use these because it's like cleaner, <laughs> you know, trying to move the liquid between uh, vessels. People use old autoclaves that have sideways ports. Yeah, I've seen stuff like that, and I'm definitely like envious. Um, I just haven't, I'm just not in a, in the space where I can really, you know, mess with that to kind of set up. So there is like a limit, you know, I can't cast like really big stuff, but most of what I'm casting is like all these small pieces, so it hasn't been an issue yet. And the way these molds are, these like square, I, you know, I call them sock molds, because I, I don't know what else to call them. Like I just stack them on top of each other, so that seems to work. I've like thought about, you know, larger projects and I haven't even thought about how I would approach like the casting. Cause definitely like, you know, the size of your pot is a constraint. So it either affects like your material choices or uh, you know how you work or whatever. Um, so I need to clean out this thing. Yeah, I often joke that this is the cleaning tools channel and not the uh, resin casting channel. Because I do spend a lot of time cleaning stuff. But just the way that I work, it's kind of necessary. It's also like longevity, you know, I'm trying to get the most miles out of my stuff. So the, like the, the small time sacrifice to clean stuff is, to me, it's worth it. Honestly, this spray bottle of alcohol I got from CVS is like great because usually I'm just pouring it. This is like a huge time saver. And it wastes so much less too, which is nice. Alright, that's done. So these towels are so 
So we're used. They've just, they're just like caked in uh, mineral spirits and alcohol. Burn through a five pack of syringes, trying to injection mold. You can get the process right, decided from then. Just paper graduated cups until I could do it. Yeah, it's definitely like a learning investment. Um, but like kind of getting a handle on how to do this, because there was, when I started out, I tried to injection cash because I was like, oh, that seems like the way to do it, right? Uh, Tata, hey Tata. Uh, you get having to clean through tools and syringes, gotta do the same when I'm mixing vape juice. Yeah, it's just like, you know, I'm trying to get the most I can out of these things. But, um, uh, yeah, with the, um, actually, I'll just use this, it's cleaner. These are both the same stuff. This just has, like, less soot in it, basically. Um, yeah, so when I started out, I was, um, I was injection casting, and then I was having trouble with it, like you were saying, um, PBLC or downer, whatever you want to go by. Um, and so I was like, maybe this is like stupid, you know, maybe this is too much trouble. So I went back to, um, trying to pour stuff and, you know, it like is great for some things and it's like tough for other things. And I'm doing a lot of like small parts and, um, so like, it's really hard. I really struggled trying to pour small parts and so I like I after like a bunch of failed attempts I just like caved and went back to sur to syringes I'm just like I'm gonna make it work or I'm just not gonna do this at all you know so um that's kind of where I landed and I've just been working with it um the pipe cleaners help um, it's pipe cleaners, and then I take a towel and, you know, like you, you saw, I use needle-nose pliers to, like, get it down in there to clean it out. Um, and if you, like, if your resin has a reasonable, um, pot life, you can do it pretty consistently, because everything I cast now was all injected. So, you know, there is this cleanup step that has to be done, but, um... Well, I'm doing these beakers and stuff too, so it's I'm just like I clean everything at once and then you know move, just move on. So the syringes is like the first thing that I do, and then I clean the tools and then the containers because like worst case the silicon or the resin will just like I can pop it off of the sides of these beakers. So as long as that syringe is clean, the rest of it's all fine. Um. Yeah, so that's like the general way that I'm I do stuff. And you know, it's like not right for everyone and you have to be willing to spend the time cuz like I I've talked to other artists who are like I just want to work really fast. So, you know, injecting doesn't really work for them. And like you said, if you are going to like inject and then throw the syringes away, that it's like you're spending a lot of money just buying new syringes, which is like, tends to, well, it probably becomes like too costly, you know? Because you've got all these things you're just tossing. And that's a lot of money to spend on things you're just going to throw away. Fortunately, I'm almost done here, so this won't be going on much longer. I tried one mold with a gravity-fed hopper for the material. Uh, it was relatively effective, like small parts getting fed. Yeah, I could see that. That's another, like, thing that I discovered, because I was, um... I was molding things where there was no, uh... The part came, like, really close to the surface, or the vents, like, went to the surface, and that, and that was, like, it. And I would get a lot of um, casts where the top part like didn't form, or you could you could tell where the resin got pulled back down into the mold as it like compressed the air. So like the whole top would be just you know a ghost of itself. 
And so I started building reservoirs into the top, which, um, if you look at some of the previous posts, because I don't think I have anything here that's... I guess I've got some stuff that I chopped off. You can I can show you. But I, I build reservoirs into the top now, so that there's, like, excess that gets pulled down if the you know, that needs to happen. So that it does, like you said, it fills in you know, those gaps at the top, which normally would just be, like, air, if it wasn't there. I've actually started, like, doing a third pass on cleaning the stuff where I'll go and, like, wash it in a sink. Um to get like, you know, the alcohol and mold release and stuff off of the tools, but um, it's, it's, I can always just do that later. Cause I'm just gonna do some sculpting now that this is done. So that stuff's gonna sit in the mold, in the tank for, what's the pot life on this stuff? Uh, 60 minutes. So what is it now? 2.42, so like 3.45, four o'clock. I'll pull them and then I'll put them in a toaster oven to bake for like 10-15 minutes because I'm finding that, that post-bake helps a lot with um, finalizing the cure because like with thin parts and small parts the other thing I ran into a lot was uh, that small parts take like a whole day to cure after you've like you know the resin has set up and it's just because it didn't generate enough heat while it was curing to uh, you know reach its full hardness or whatever so I've started post baking it and it's made a big difference because then once it cools down to room temperature it's like totally cured all right I'm gonna I don't need these gloves for sculpting So I'm going to move on to this guy. Um, I did a, another pass on these, all these hair strands. Damn it, I just broke it off again. I just glued this thing back on. Oh well. Um, these are very fragile. So I need to fill in a lot of this space and make a form that I could actually mold. So that's been like an ongoing project. This is all just Sculpey Firm. We've seen setups where the tank itself is warmed up as well. That was awesome, but I wouldn't well, trust myself to build a heating element into anything. Yeah, I feel you. Um, that's like what uh, scares me off from trying to build just an actual injection machine, right? Because all it really is is like you have a hopper for the, the plastic chips that goes down into a tube that has a screw in it and then uh, like a, a pipe or whatever that, that attaches to the, the metal mold and the the two like the whole cylinder where the corkscrew is it's all heated you know so like as it gets fed it liquefies and the screw pushes it all forward into the mold and I know you can like I've seen builds of those where people have made really small um, injection machines at home but I don't feel like you said I, I'm the same way like I don't feel confident enough in my skills to uh, take on anything like that all right so I need um this little cup and I'm dropping everything on the floor as always let's see so I'm just gonna put alcohol in this because it it's a works as a solvent on this clay, and it'll like melt the clay a little bit, which helps it like stick to itself and to the surface. And I might have to make a new strand for that the front of his face here, or just sculpt that on later because I super glued that on yesterday and obviously it didn't stick, or it just broke in a different place, which is always fun.
thing's almost empty. Exacto is like my go-to tool for everything. This isn't like ready yet. This uh, hair sculpt is, has been a challenge because I've never sculpted hair before. So I'm having to learn as I go. And I know this is probably not the most optimal way to sculpt hair, but that's where we are. This is really just a matter of trying to fill this stuff in. Well, I'm not snapping off the hairs that are already there. side around. Should probably just fill this with clay and then worry about adding strands later. I really just need to strengthen the form so it's not like snapping every time I like breathe on it. So yeah, I think I'll just do that. I'm gonna work on just filling in this space. Uh, you've seen off the shelf thermocouple heating elements for building injection machines. That was an interesting prospect as well. I think the hard part with injection molding comes down to machining the molds, yes, which I seen an empty block that you can use to wrap your high temp silicone um, there's a there's a cool um, yes the machining is probably the hardest part right because that's like where you're ultimately your tooling and stuff is and that's the hardest part to do and that's like what we pay factories for right um, so I don't know if the guy's blog is still around or not but there was this, um, I think it was like a blog spot, blog, to give you an idea how old it is. <clears throat> and it's called, um, I think it's actually just a series of posts. And it's called the Gorilla Guide to CNC, uh, to CNC, maybe that's just all it is. So basically what this guy does is he does like RC stuff or something, that's like his, his hobby and um but he's like an engineer or something like by at his job and so he he designs um parts in like cad or in 3d or whatever and he pours blocks of resin and then he has a cnc machine that he built and i think it's a three act it must be a three axis so he like puts the block of resin under the CNC machine and he uses the machine to carve away at the resin to create a mold. And then he resin casts gears and stuff for his RC things off of those ca those molds. And I forget what he's casting them in, if it's other resin or whatever, but um, I, I have it like bookmarked, like I said, I don't know if it's still active or not. But it was really cool, and he's like the only person I've seen who does who uses resin as like a a machining material because it's like cheaper to to make than um, you know trying to get blocks of metal or you know building a forge, which is insane. Um, so there's definitely like possibilities. I just don't know how feasible they are. You know, it all depends on like your um, knowledge and your budget and 
how how much you're willing to like experiment and all that. And there's even um, an injection. I think it's called injection casting. It's injection casting or injection molding subreddit. And I've joined that and I just like peruse it. I mean, it's mostly just, you know, people who work in that field talking about stuff. Um, but there's like some useful information there. There's actually a, a, a textbook about designing injection molds. Uh, I have a PDF copy of it. Well, it's a series of PDFs. My partner, um, she's a teacher at a university, so like at her last place she had, you know, access to their inner, inter whatever library so she could get like digital copies of, of books. So I have, I have this uh, unofficial, I guess, copy of this textbook. Um, I like skim it, I have to like actually read it. Um, but I mean it's a textbook so it's not like a fun read. But um, there's, you know, it talks about like um, designing the mold for like, you know, the flow of your material and how to how to compensate for like pressure and all that. Um, oh, sorry about that. I have to. Um, shit, that's not cool. Uh, on timeout. Sorry. Uh, I, need, I really need to configure this Nightbot, because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, Unbot... What is your name? PLC, yeah. Unban? You're not banned. You're not timed out. I really need to fix that, I don't know how to do it. Okay, I... I really need to like learn how to manage this bot because <laughs> I that's the second time that's happened to like someone who's who's on a lot and they like posted something and it like immediately you know deleted a bunch of their messages and I was just like oh great I only added the bot really to like have you know um, use like basic commands for you know oh you want to see like my social stuff or whatever you know, you could just like type a command in there, but I, I think you have to like give specific users like permission to post links or something. And it's tough, like while I'm streaming, to to do that because it's you know I gotta like my computer. I'm afraid to like breathe on it when it's streaming because um it is old and weak. So I have to like make a mental note to do it like after after I'm done. Um, you can put it in the Discord if you want, because I, I have it open in another tab. So then it'd be like available for like other people if they want to check it out too. Otherwise, I can like throw the link up there later tonight. And like, if we hadn't been talking about this, I wouldn't even have thought about it, you know, to like reference that that guy's site. This is like Tetris trying to get around these strands and not break them. have to I mean I want to sculpt I gotta sculpt some other heads and, and whatnot so uh, I assume I'll eventually get better at this I don't know
probably should have added more layers, like, before I put the, the, the upper ones on. Oh well. It's fine. messages got deleted was saying I had to freeze the monster clay on the host to do a similar process of filling in between the tentacles. In your case, Sculpey takes the heat gun very well. Yeah, um, actually, I use my toaster oven for this, so I, I like, um, put like a layer of these tentacles on, and then, uh, oops. and then I put it, I put it in the toaster oven and bake it for like 10 minutes, and then once it cools down, it's like, you know, it's all solid. I learned that I could do that with Epoxy Sculpt too, which Epoxy Sculpt is cool, but I was like, man, this 24 hour cure time is like bull. And I was talking to, uh, to Suki or um, Fucked Toys as he's going by now. Uh, and he was like, I think you can bake that. So I was like looking online and it was like kind of unclear about like the temperature and I was like, well, I bake, you know, the molds at like 200 or 150 for 10 minutes. I'm like, well, I'll just toss it in for, you know, 10 minutes at 150 and see like how it does. And it like, you know, comes out totally cured. So I'm just like, awesome. It's like not the right material for, um, for this, like making these strands, because you can't form it like you can clay. It's more like a putty almost. But, um, it's gonna be weird I'm trying to get it up in there. But knowing it, like being able to bake it, um, it allowed some of the other stuff I was working on to like move a little bit quicker. Because it was before that, I was like, put on, you know, a thin layer and then wait a whole day. I'm like, this is bullshit. But yeah, you can bake epoxy sculpt in, in an oven or probably with a heat gun. That'd probably work too. Cause I used to use heat guns. Well, I have a heat gun and I used to use it for like, you know, baking clay, this clay. So I could, you know, get more of it done or make more progress. Um, but I like was uh, I like mentioned to my partner about like oh I want to get like a crappy toaster oven to like you know use to bake molds and casts and stuff and she like went on to I don't know our neighborhood like Facebook group or whatever and somebody was like she found one somebody was giving away that was like dirty so she went and got it brought it home you know cleaned it somewhat. And so I'm now I'm using that. It's pretty small, but I mean it's it is big enough for what I need it for. So if you have the space, um, go find yourself a used toaster oven. I'm sure you can get one at a thrift store if nothing else. Um, it's a it's a heat gun you don't have to hold. <laughs> you can control the temperature better, and they heat up really fast, which is nice. Because it's such a small space, you know, it like can uh, get the elements up to the right temperature pretty quick. So I definitely recommend a toaster oven if you are looking to bake things or post cure things.
in your toaster oven and a hot plate for your monster clay. <laughs> Um, I don't have a hot plate yet. I could use a hot plate for, um, so like, you know, Kerfloss goes on and on about the wax, right? And I have, um, dental wax, which I've shown you guys. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> sorry. And, um, I was using a soldering iron, not a soldering iron, I was using a, uh, a votive candle to like heat up my I just used a little tiny flathead screwdriver as like my sculpting tool and um, I it like collects too much soot from the candle so I switched to using a, a soldering iron so I could just rest it on that to keep it hot because I've seen you know people use like alcohol lamps and whatnot I was like ugh, too much too much trouble I assume it's soot free and that's probably why. Um, there's a guy, I think I mentioned it in one of the creative discussions. He's on Twitch, he goes by C Not Brush, so the letter C N O T brush. And he's he's like a commission sculptor. He just sculpts like big pieces and that's like his that's his job. Um like fantasy stuff and whatnot, but he does it like on commission. He uses um, a clay called, what is it called? Not clean clay, he uses, um, shoot, I know what it's called, I'm trying to, I'm like blanking on the name. Cosclay, Cosclay, yeah, yeah, there it is, yeah. And, um, so he uses like an alcohol lamp, I think, to, to heat up his tools. But um, something like a hot plate would work too, because you could just like rest your tools on, like against it. I guess it's a little more of a liability, you know, you could like rest your hand on it or the whole tool gets too warm or whatever. But. Like how we all were like cosplay all at the same time, pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've heard good things about that and Monster Clay. Oh, I just haven't tried them yet. <laughs> yeah, a whole thing on fire at your desk, yeah. Seems like it could be a little bit of a problem. Or a liability, yeah, for sure. For me, yeah, I'm like, ah. Eh. Sometimes my cat comes in here because I forget to close the door, and I'm like, oh, I don't need, I don't need my cat getting up on the desk and you know, standing on the, walking over to the flame or whatever. Goofy cat. This is like running out. precarious I'm like trying to slowly jam little tiny bits of the clay down into the grooves without snapping off any of the tentacles hair hairticles I don't know hair sculpt wise I've not done a lot of it but I think in the future attempts I would do it subtractively yeah I've I've watched like a, a several different tutorials like different artists sculpting it and they all have different approaches so it definitely seems like you kind of just figure out what works for you for the like the look you're trying to get and then go from there um because like i've got you know she's got like i don't know if you can see her yeah it's all like one basically big piece this guy's off camera but you can't see him um but it's more like uh Looks like it's kind of subtractive, but yeah, I, I think it's just an experiment. You know, you figure out what works and what doesn't. Obviously, this is a little too slow and 
difficult, so I probably won't do this again. But I'm, like, this far into it, so I'm not gonna, like, scrap it and, you know, I'm just gonna keep working with it till it's, like, looks okay, and then I'll learn for what I can from the experience and try to do it a little more efficiently next time. Or try a different technique or whatever. Because it's definitely, you know, been a little... A little uh, difficult at times. Like I was, I was pretty sure this wasn't the best way when I started doing it. But I was like, well, I don't know what I'm doing, and there's not like, you know, it doesn't hurt me to like do it this way. If it doesn't work out, then you know, I learned a lesson. Even even if it does work out, I'm you know, there's still lessons to be learned. Like, I, I knew I was going to be filling in space the whole time. Yeah, for sure. Just power through when you make a decision. You're like, I'm, 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 already, I'm already invested. Let's just go and see where it, what happens. Yeah, I totally agree. Because, like, sometimes if you don't, you know, put go through to the end, you don't know if it would have, if it would have, like, worked out or not. So it's, you know, it can be easy to sometimes, you know, kind of throw in the towel a little too early. And it's like, it's fine, you know, if you feel like something's not working, it's it's silly to just keep dumping time into it. But if you're making progress, even like slowly, it's still positive, you know? Like, at this point, I could probably use epoxy sculpt. I could probably use some of that to, like, fill in some of this space. Because it's, it's like, um, it gets really, um, like, mushy uh, when you first mix it up. So I, you could probably jam it into these spaces pretty easily. It might, um, it might, like move down into the gaps a little easier than this clay is. I mean, the clay is working fine, it's just kind of slow, you know. Because I gotta be careful not to put too much pressure on things so they don't break. Like, there's this big space in here, I'm gonna need to fill that in. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I'll figure it out when I get there. So then I'm just trying to fill in some of the, the underside. That's kind of how I look at it, like, if I'm making some positive progress, you know, I can't be, can't focus on, like, the things I could have done better. It's like, you worry about that stuff later when you're gonna, like, move on to the next thing. But if this is, like, working, just keep working with it. At least get it to some degree of completion and then assess it, you know. I uh, used epoxy sculpt the first time just to fill in portions of the figure I was editing. Interesting, so I'm not sure how I feel about it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. Um, it definitely has its pros and cons. I mean, it, I guess everything does. That's kind of silly to say that. But um, you have to, like, learn how to work with it, I guess I would say. And that's what I'm still kind of learning is, like, how do, how do I work with this stuff to get the, you know, desired result. Um, so this, Crumbs called this guy over here the, the rotten banana. So, like... All this black stuff, this is all epoxy sculpt. Um, I was using it to, to fill in and smooth over, and the yellow is paint, because I, I had to do a coat to look for imperfections and stuff. 
Um, so that I, you know, it's like doing body work on a car. You put some on, you sand it down, prime it. How does it look? Do it again till you get the, you know, the surface you're looking for. Um, all this stuff here, this is all epoxy sculpt. I have two, I have a yellow and black. Yellow so I can see detail. Cause like when I sculpted this, the head, this thing, this was like, it looked like the rotten banana cause it had black and yellow epoxy sculpt on it. So like this is, I kind of piled this stuff on. You can slop it on. This is just, I used water to thin it out. But then you can sand this stuff down to like a really smooth finish. Um, so it has different traits than a clay does. But it's it's a lot harder to build up like its own mass. You have to kind of have it resting on something. Whereas like clay, you can just like chunk it in and then like refine it, you know. But epoxy sculpt doesn't really, I guess you can do it like that, but it doesn't seem like it's conducive to the, the way the material behaves. What the fuck do I know? I mean, I've only been using it for like two months and not like even every day. So I'm still learning how to work with it myself. But it, it has it has a place, you know. I I'm happy with it for the, the ways I've used it. Oh my cable's here. Sweet. It has a weird latency period of like an hour to become like workable like clay. My approach is just wrong because I'm expecting yeah. It is weird. That first hour, it's like um it's like a slimy putty. And that's when I, I've been working with it. I work with it in the first like hour or so, and then I just put it aside. So what I started doing when I realized I could bake it is I like kind of slop it on, you know, I shape it a little bit, and then I stick it in the oven and bake it. And then I just like slap more of it on. Because um, you'd mentioned subtractive, like for the hair, right? And so like, the way that I think I like working with epoxy sculpt, just in a little bit that I've done with it, is I think I like working with it subtractively, where I put a bunch of it on, and I like rough out the shape, and then I, I cure it via a bake or just waiting, and then I come back with like, um, I use this, and I just carve away at it and sand it to like refine the shape. Because it's, you can take like more of a beating once it's uh, cured. So I can like I'll like rough sand it and then I'll carve it with metal tools and, um, and I think I like that because I don't have to worry about like, oh no I pressed too hard on this part of the surface and now I crushed all the detail like no it's like hard so you have to really hammer at it to like ruin details you've added. But I also kind of like that it's flexible like that. You can work with it in its uh, softer state or, you know, in this like subtractive way that I'm kind of working with it. It's going to be really hard to do this on our side. Like, I'm actually kind of tempted to just slap some epoxy sculpt on this right now. I don't love working with um, sculpting with gloves on, so that's one thing I don't like about epoxy sculpt. Because I feel like I've got, you know, bags on my hands. So it affects a little bit of my, like, motor control. Or precision, I guess is more the right word.
Oh, that's the new one I just added. I was like, why is this so soft? The first time we did it without gloves, I was just slammed by it and <laughs> not pleasant. Definitely requires gloves, which I also don't like. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, that's the thing I probably like the least about it, is having to wear gloves while I use it. But, yeah, it sticks to everything. So you definitely gotta wear gloves, unfortunately. But it also can't be that great for your skin. See how much clay I can get in here, um, and then I'm gonna put this in the oven in a little while. Bake it to harden up the stuff I put on, and then I'm gonna put some epoxy sculpt on here. See what I can do with that. It'll make this any easier. Um, some people claim there's there's some like solution, some kind of solvent or something you can get to like work with a epoxy sculpt. It's supposed to be better for like um, dissolving it to like help it, f you know, fit on stuff and smooth it out or whatever. And they're like, oh, it's so much better than water. But I just use water. That's fine. I figure like I'm I'm still new to the material so like I shouldn't be too concerned about all the you know best things to use with it like I just need to learn how to work with it before I worry about what's the best way This stuff, this Sculpey Firm and Epoxy Sculpt, they're just such different materials. You know, they've got such different qualities that it's it's hard to compare them. I would just say that they're different tools for a similar job. off. I don't want to have to glue this back on. I love, this is the all super glue. I don't know if you can see there's a glossiness, but I snapped off like three of these strands yesterday or the day before when I was working on this. So I had to like really carefully glue them back on, which was super fun. But um, another thing to get if you, cause like, okay, like different artists have different workflows, right? Different sculptors, like this Cena brush guy I mentioned, 
you know, he sculpts, he's got a wire armature, and he uses cosplay, and that's it. That's like his whole, his whole kit. Um, and whatever, you know, his, his tools, his clay tools are. And, and that's cool, you know. Um, I use like a bunch of different stuff. I use the Sculpey Firm, I use Epoxy Sculpt, I use um, resin pieces, I use uh, polystyrene plastic, um, wood, uh, just like whatever material is like helpful for the thing I'm trying to do. Sorry, this little tiny bit is, keeps falling over. That's what I'll use. Like I'm not, I'm not like married to any specific like material. It's just part of like art, you know. You like find the uh, stuff that you like working with, or the way that you that speaks to you as far as um, creating your pieces, and and that's cool. You know, it doesn't need to be the the best way or the you know someone's definition of the right way or whatever. Like, if it works for you, then great. That's the, okay, that's the new one. And there goes my Vagender. Well, that was inevitable. Part of the risk of decorating your workspace. stuff almost completely so I can just let it kind of flow into these gaps. If the epoxy is coming up, I can just kind of jam it in there, which is nice. slow of like a way to work I guess but I don't know on the other hand it's like a little cathartic you can kind of just you know just focus on the sculpt and not worry too much about other stuff at least for a little while I still got a half hour before that those cats can come out so I still got time to kill and this thing's done anyway fill it in before I can think about like what's the the final look of it I kind of foolishly thought I'd be able to sculpt this stuff fast but 
It turns out that's not going to be the case. So I have to just be okay with that, and it's just going to take longer than I thought it was. Because I'm just not... don't have the sculpting skills yet to work, work fast. Someday. A lot of this stuff was, was like the just defining like the, sh the overall shape, and I could build up on on and around to get the more final look. Which I'm really just making up as I'm going along, so that probably doesn't help. But it's part of the fun. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet. on a swivel. I was like, how am I going to get under the, under this part here where the shoulder is? Turn the head dummy. That's how. creative leaps to you, to see a lot of very planned out things from people, which is great, but if that's the target, I just love trying and seeing where you end up. Yeah, that's what, like, I've been doing with a lot of this stuff, is, um, the sword, I had, like, a, I made some, like, raw, really, really, really rough sketches of, like, a few different ones, and I was like, well, I should probably start, like, kind of, kind of simple, so I, I used the one as, like, a guide, and, you know, it came out as just, like, geometric thing and then just like the head I didn't have a goal I just was like you know it needs to look like a face not like a weird uh, uh, surrealistic skull or whatever so I just kept working with it and you know I was like I should maybe, maybe use like a reference and I was like you need this a sculpt a face period that looks, that looks human and then we'll worry about likenesses later. I mean, the people that can do likeness sculpts, it's so cool. It's gotta be really stressful though. I was like, I, there was this post on Reddit last, last week or over the weekend or something. And it was this guy, he used like a, he used like an armature skeleton as like a base. It was kind of like a doll looking one it had kind of like an anime looking face and he sculpted um, a Harley 
Quinn uh, figure over top of it, based it, based off some artwork or something. Maybe it was a photo from the movie. And basically, like, people were complaining that the face was, was close, but not exact. And a few people were like, do you know how hard it is to sculpt a face and make it look like a person? Like, you know, a specific person? Um, so that always, like, impresses me, like, Hot Toys stuff and, um, Sideshow Collectibles with these, like, super high-quality sculpts. It's like, damn, that is pretty good. But yeah, it's like you said, they're, you know, they've got a goal already, so, like, okay, yeah, this needs to look like Margot Robbie, this needs to look like, um, uh, I was gonna say Tony Stark, um, uh, Robert Downey Jr., right? And, like, if they get there, you're like, oh, that's really cool, yeah. But it's like, it's not a surprise. You know, they knew where they were going the whole time. It was just a question of, like, could they get there? As opposed to, like, you know, they're just, like, winging it. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure what this is gonna, what this is gonna look like, or who it's gonna look like, or whatever. And just kind of, like, seeing where it goes. You know, that, that, like, ideation... It's definitely, to me, like part of the, part of the fun. It's like, it's cool to have designs, you know, to have like a general direction, but it's also cool to like deviate from that and just kind of see where it takes you. I don't, I think it's a risk to try to take this off. Oh, look at that, he's bald. Cause I got all this under here I gotta fill in. That's gonna be... That's gonna be real fun. So I think I'm gonna do that later once I've, I've secured all these outer strands. I just wanna see if I could even take this thing off without breaking it. He still has a, he still has a seven head so I gotta work on that. <laughs> Once I build up this under mass, I can like add more strands. So I should just work on on trying to do that because it'll be more secure in general. I'll be less afraid of breathing on it and snapping it into ten pieces. like I, it doesn't need all these individual strands it's not like I could mold this so inevitably a lot of this is gonna get filled in my my partner asked me last night when I was showing her um, you know where I was before I started working on it today and she was like that's cool she's like but how are you gonna how are you gonna mold all the um, or fill in all the little, you know, strands and whatnot, and I was like, well, they're probably not all gonna be there, you know, and I, so, like, it was a good, you know, it was a good question, because it's relevant, obviously, and something I have to think about, and it's one thing to do it is, like, oh, it's a one-off sculpt, right, so it can have, you know, f little flyaways and things like that, but, like, you can't really mold that stuff very well, it's hard because it's just too small, too fragile. So you gotta like compromise and find a space in between. So I kind of like look at this as like, well, this is the spirit of what I want it to look like. So we'll see how close to that spirit I can get or stay or whatever. While still having something that, you know, I can put in a mold or I can mold and get like a successful cast off of it. And like that engineering challenge is like part of the fun too for me. You know, it's like I have this, so it's not just like a creative goal, 
it's like, okay, I have this creative goal and once I meet that, now can I, you know, reproduce that creative creative achievement or is this like just going to be limited to like a one-off thing because it's too difficult to mold? This is like where epoxy sculpt is good because like right now I'm trying to take this little piece of clay and kind of work it down into these spaces. But the epoxy sculpt, it like gets so thin when it's fresh, not when it's been like worked with for an hour. Um, or you can, it'll like just fill little, little spaces on its own just by gravity, which is nice. So I'm probably going to have to switch over to that kind of soon. I was wanted to see how far I could get this with the clay. And it's working, but it's like, it's kind of slow. Um, so there's definitely like some, you know, some setbacks and stuff. these last two um these last two things here oops dang it sorry I'm distracted um yeah I'll use up this little bit of clay I got here and then I'll, pr I'll put them in the oven I guess I don't even need to put them in the oven quite yet, because it's already like kind of stuffed in there. I can add, add a layer of epoxy sculpt and then um, just put it all in there as one thing. strand that doesn't want to stay in place. He's got fun stuff. That's fine. Alright. So I have to get some water. I 
grab some water and I'll be right back. Uh, we'll use this one. so it's easier to see. Scrap towel. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm like looking forward to it. I unfortunately will have to bake it first and then let it cool so there's still like a longer wait on it. Um, but it's better than like having to let it sit like all night. Because that always killed me. I was like, I get to put stuff in, but then I'm like, man, I gotta wait till tomorrow to take it out. It sucks. So once I started um, doing the post cure bake, it was like, you know, it like changed everything. These two balls need to be about the same size. I think you can offset this stuff like you can with green stuff. Or if you want it to be a little softer, you can, uh, these balls are probably too big. Um, or you can have them like at different ratios to get a different consistency. I just try to keep them pretty close together though. Alright, and then do a little bit of water. Yeah, that's why I thought I'd do the resin casts first, because like I gotta wait for those, so I'm like, well, I'll do those first, and they can be like you know, a little bit a little reward later, something like cool comes out. I should definitely be able to open them, the molds before the stream's over. It's it's surprising how long the silicone holds holds heat. Because if I take them out too early, like they could deform. Like or like you know you like pull it and it gets like bent and then it because it's still a little soft. Because the heat softens it. So what's it, it's like weird? It gets like hot and then it softens and then as it you know, cools down, it, it like hardens to its like final consistency. It's definitely, but I mean, still like spending less time waiting is always, always good. All right, so let's see. Um, I guess I'll start under here. Spin this around. Oh, God damn it. I knew that was gonna happen. Where'd it even come up from? Oh, right there. Well, it being on the top, I can just glue it back on and it'll be fine. Stuff sticks to the knife. It's always like tough to get it down the first time. Once I glob some water on it, it should be fine though. Yeah, so this stuff just like spreads so much faster than the clay does. Um, sometimes it's a little tough to get it down at first. Because it wants to stick to the tool you're using. Um, when I first started using this, I used uh, petroleum jelly. And it works fine too, it, it does the same thing but it can um, inhibit it from like sticking to things so you could potentially have like layers that separate um, but on the upside it's also uh, according to uh, Aves or whatever the company that makes it 
the uh, you can also use that trait to um, if you want like two pieces to not to like have an, an exact fit but you don't want them to like bond you can slather petroleum jelly into it in between them first and then you know press it on or whatever and it won't um, it won't like stick to it so then once it cures it'll be a separate piece um, that hasn't worked for me in practice but you know I'm gonna assume it does since they said it does I should have just used this stuff right out of the gate. I was like, no, I'm going to use the clay and it'll be great. Negative. Yeah, it's one thing about tasks that I'm not thrilled about is like how long the, the cure time is. It's like, you know, an hour, which doesn't sound like it's a long time, but when you're just like, I want to see it. Yeah, then it feels like forever. When I get the same way, I'm just like, I'm so excited to see if this thing came out. I want to pull it out right now, but then I can't because it's going to, no, it's going to not be cured and I'm going to be upset. These are so flimsy. Come on. Come on. I bet, I bet that's broken. Yeah, it is. Fuck. That explains why it's so loose. Well, I guess we'll just use the epoxy sculpt to try to fuse it in there. This whole thing was like an experiment doing this hair. I didn't really know what a good way to do this was going to be. I could see using some kind of scaffolding like um, wire and foil or something to like define your shape. So I'll, I'll show you the first um, once I finish putting this on. The first time I tried to sculpt hair, which was actually fur. It's on an unfinished sculpt I started like years ago. I just keep like, I work on it every now and then, but I haven't, it's not like anywhere close to finished. Um, Cause it turns out sculpting things from scratch when you don't have a lot of experience, actually is kind of hard. <laughs> um, it's a little like, three inch Krampus um, which is based on a friend of mine's art because I try to make a, a game a Krampus game like years ago uh, for like you know mobile devices or whatever and you know I didn't didn't happen but um I was like oh, it'd be cool to make like a figure of him so it's like uh, on the back burner well, I'd say it's not even on the back burner. It's like in the, in the, uh, I don't know. It's under the warming lamps or something. It's like, we don't want it to be totally stale, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna have it anytime soon. Let's see if I can get some of this up under here. My cable's here. So 
I'm gonna swap that out. I'll just set it down. Thanks. Mm -hmm. One strand is broken, so I'm trying to build up like some epoxy sculpt around it to kind of hold it in there so it doesn't come out. So I can press it down a little bit too. and fix it. Just like coat it. Oh man, of course it came up there too. I guess I didn't secure it to the scalp well enough. I have to just remake that entire thing. Hmm. Or I can do this. I'll try to just shit. Try to shit. It's actually starting to get into that like that clay-like um, consistency now. It's thicker and uh, doesn't like liquefy as easily. So I gotta like drown it to get it to to turn into a, a liquidy. Form. And this stuff's like resin, you know, like once you mix it up, you just gotta use it. Otherwise it's gonna it's gonna cure no matter what you do, so you gotta find a way to use it. says the plexus sculpt. I will put this guy into the oven for 10 minutes and then switch out my 
audio cable. And then we should be close to uh, pulling that stuff out of the mold. Oh, it's like almost four o'clock, so yeah, it'll be coming out here. Once I finish this, we'll pull the stuff out of the mold, or out of the tank, put this guy in the oven, switch the audio cable, we'll check those molds to see where, uh, where they're at, if we can open any of them. And then, um, by the time we finish that, the this guy should be done baking, so he can come out and sit off to the side in case I gotta put any, anything into it to like post bake. That's like another thing I'm trying to get better at, um, and streaming has like helped me do that, which is um, like stacking things so that I'm kind of always working on like something. There's not a lot of like idle time, and because there's like a lot of different facets to this project, and trying to you know plan things, even just like loosely, so there's always something to work on. Because there is, there is, you know, like there's something's always incomplete, and that's where like things like baking the epoxy sculpt or like baking the molds uh, to post cure the the resin, like all those things matter because they all are like time, you know, and time is like the one thing you can't get more of or buy or whatever. So it's like the more efficiently you can use that time, the better. So if, if I'm always got something, you know, I can pick up while something else is curing or whatever, um, or, or under pressure, then I can get, you know, a little bit more progress done on something. And if like, there's rare situations where like, all the things for that project are in some, some phase of like waiting, then I'll start on something else. It'll just pick up like, you know, because I have projects that are like pending. Like I want to make this female figure, so like I have things I need to do to prep parts for that, and I gotta, you know, kit bash things, and I gotta break pieces of figures apart to like extract parts to make. Um, I'm gonna have to fabricate a lot of stuff for that figure. I've looked around for a good. Um, female figure that's like at the scale that I want, which is like 5.5 .5 roughly. 5.5 .5 to 6, they're all pretty close. Um, but it's also the build, like almost every female action figure is like this like very thin bodied woman and because I'm doing these like, you know, hulky barbarian guys, like I want um, a woman who looks like she lives in that world so she's not like waif like you know she's not like a bodybuilder but you know not like real thin either um so i haven't really found too much that satisfy those uh design ideas so it's turning out that I have to just make a lot of it myself, which is fine. It's just a makes the project a little bit more complicated than I had hoped for. So I've, I've picked out some a few figures that I have to sacrifice to get parts from them, because then I'll have to like make some change, some modifications. I'll have to do some sculpting to get them looking the way that I want. That's better. So that's all the epoxy sculpts. We'll save these this broken hair for later. We'll put it with the other one that's broken. And we'll glue that stuff back on later. Alright, so I'm gonna open the uh I'm gonna open the tank here. So it might be a little bit loud. first.
we switch out this cable. We get, like I had to buy an extension so that it's not constantly like in front of the camera. And if I turn too far, I like pull it off the off the table. Yeah, they are, they are urban ears. Clearly, they're like shit too, right? Because the the uh, all this stuff came off. So I just end up scraping a bunch of it off. Yeah, I've had them for quite a while. They're the only like over-the-ear headphones I have. Everything else is earbuds, which are fine, but like. Um, the two wires just get tangled on stuff so often. All right, here's all the all the molds. Yeah, I got these as a gift too. I've just had them for forever. Yeah, see this stuff is like... The thin stuff is soft, and it shouldn't be. But then the, if it's like thicker, it's solid. So um, these torso pieces are gonna be like too thin to pull now. Um, I'm probably gonna have to bake these. Cause usually like this overflow I, is like a good indication so like if I can bend this it's not cured enough because this task stuff is like it's a rigid resin so if it has any like flex to it it's it's not cured so I just pull off some of this excess I'm not sure what I've got that's uh, thick right this is what is this? I even I forgot because I just grabbed molds. Those are oh, these are um the pelvis halves, right? So these are going to be thin also. This is the Y part. This is going to be too thin. Yeah. Um, I think I can pull these hands and feet, but the uh, these parts all need to be baked. So I'm going to have to do that first. So once we hear the bell, we'll know that the other guy is done. And we'll swap these out. We'll put these all into the uh, oven. We'll cook them, see what, and then pull them out, and then wait a little longer for them to cool down. So we'll see what we can get out of this. This is the boots. I'm pretty sure it's the boots, yeah. So there's the booties. And then, I mean, these aren't these aren't the colors they're going to be. Actually, the hands are. I gotta, I gotta fix this mold. It needs like an outer coating. It's very thin right there. Let's see. flashing than I would like, but I ain't gonna be too upset about it. Gloves are like unnecessary evil, but it's the moment I can like take them off, I'm like, they're off, they're coming off. <laughs> There's such a hindrance sometimes. side here. And that one went down my shirt. Well, 
put down my apron, I guess. Expected, but um, I am I am mad about it. The uh, the task will do a transparent. You can get like a pretty decent transparency out of it. Uh, the 60D is always like it's always a little cloudy. It's just it's being a uh, um a semi rigid resin. They're just a little bit more rubbery, so they they don't uh, do clear quite as well. gets all the flashing. Yeah. Put that inside now. Alright, so that's all scrap. We'll trim this down in a little bit. some of this flashing so it's a little easier to remove the parts. Access the, the vents without tearing the mold apart. Sometimes it's. Is it not cut fully? No, it is. It's just stuck to this other piece. these vents I was going to be careful that I'm not cutting like the silicone damaging the mold I guess if I just separate these it would be easier that's probably why it was a little bit more annoying than it should have been so I have like less stuff to clean up next time. Okay. Well, so these are the raw parts with like just, you know, the flashing taken off that I could do with my hand. So this other stuff, I'll, I'll use like a knife or um, a saw to remove it. So the slight stuff here, I can usually just remove with uh, an X-Acto pretty easily. Just gotta like be mindful of like the camera so that it's like visible. A lot of these seam lines have been pretty decent, where there's like not a lot of uh, 
thick flashing. Most of it's like this very like paper thin stuff that I can carve off. And then like the way that I design these molds, I try to like put all my venting and stuff like in a place that's essentially hidden. So once you assemble the figure, like all this stuff is inside the joint, so then you don't see it. Um, and then I use a jeweler saw to get like this other stuff off, because you can get like a pretty flat cut with this. Yeah, the sips are great. I use these um, nibblers for like a lot of stuff. off with these. So these these gliose joints are always like a challenge to, uh, I found them to be kind of a challenge to mold and cast. They're where I've had the most trouble with um, air bubbles and uh, deformities and stuff like that. So I've had to like come up with like creative ways to vent them. I think I've got it like fairly close, but uh, it's not like 100% there yet. Where I'm getting like exact, you know, perfect casts of them every time. And like factories just have the advantage of like, you know, they're just forcing plastic in until there's like nowhere left for it to go. So it just like fills every possible gap so the, you know, their molds can be, uh, they don't need to like compensate for that. They can just be the shape and, you know, the pressure does the rest. Whereas, like, with resin, you gotta, you know, there's compromises you gotta make to get it all to fit. Like, I'll sand this stuff down to get it a better fit. This is just the, the cursory removal of all the flashing. I got, I got this jeweler saw like years ago when I started like opening torsos and stuff like that um, and the other thought was what I'm doing now was like if I can cut along the surface you know I can use it to remove flashing and stuff without um, having to do a lot of sanding so it does minimize how much I have to sand because like the snips get really close, um, but sometimes the the saw is better. Like on for this this post, like the snips are better, you know. Um, th these are I use these for so much stuff; they get used constantly. It's a little hard to see with it being like this color, but um, I'm trying to keep it like in the air as much as I can. It's also a small part, so like my whole, my hand kind of hides a lot of it just from holding it. So the hand's a little a little trickier. I have this like bent piece that goes around the fingertips make sure that like no air gets trapped in there. It usually works fairly well. The other hand has uh, the, the fist hand or whatever, the grip hand, 
has a couple of little flaws on it. I I could stand to remold that, um, but like it's mostly serviceable. Um, the flaws aren't like that glaring that it, you know needs to like be redone now. It can it can wait until like the next iteration. Because once I do all the trimming and sanding and stuff, like the flaws are very, almost invisible. I'm just, you know, when you make the thing, you see all the things that are wrong with it, so then it's easier to be really judgmental about the piece and be like, oh, this is shit, and I should redo it, and... But like we've talked about in the discussions, you know, like, other people don't see your flaws the same way that you see them, because you've got the most critical eye of your own work. It's, it can be hard to wrestle with that sometimes. So I'll use the snips to get like, you know, the bulk of the stuff out of here. Then I'll go back and refine it. I usually do a couple of passes. <clears throat> the first pass is this, and then the second pass is the exacto, and then the third pass is usually sanding if it needs it. These glue are supposed to always need to be sanded. There's really no uh, straightforward like I have. I haven't found a way to cast those where I haven't had to do like a little bit of cleanup on them. There's actually a little air bubbles in the fingers here, like in between the fingers. There's always little bubbles I gotta break out. Then do some like a little bit of scraping on here to remove the rest of the flashing. I said uh, it wasn't until you started getting pieces from other people that I realized my eye for quality on my pieces was probably too heavy, and I can tone it down. The active post processing efforts, sanding, etc., would be essentially 90% of the way. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely true. Um, I know I'm still in that like hypercritical phase because I've only shipped like products once. So to me, I'm still like, this isn't good enough, you know. But like you said, it's it's hard to you have to like just kind of unlearn that on your own that hypercriticism of like what you're putting out. Because like if someone gets it and they're unhappy with it, they'll let you know. You know, and then you know, like, kind of where the external threshold of your quality should be. Oh, that guy's done. I totally forgot that he was done. I'm gonna go swap, swap that stuff out.
just put that stuff in for like 12 minutes. Um, so then I just have to wait for it to cool down. I think an honest part of the bootleg appeal is the light imperfections, handmade and all that. Yeah, I can I can see that. That definitely makes sense with like the aesthetic of of because uh, like people associate bootleg with like imperfect, right? So they expect there to be flaws. So like someone who's buying bootleg, literally anything, is never going to be like shock, ah, oh, ah, oh, clutch my pearls whenever they see like you know something's like not perfect. That's, they know they're buying, like, a clone. Even though clones enter the battlefield as a copy, you know, an exact copy, so. Because I gotta inject uh, nerdy magic humor anywhere that I can. It's like real finicky on the hands. I like go over the seam lines a lot. I've also got time to kill while that stuff is um curing. I gotta wait for the head to cool down fully before I can start messing with it again. But I could do um, another cast of I could do a set of arms and legs so that I've got a complete figure by like the end of the day. Don't worry, you inject casting costs into things all the time. <laughs> I want you to request water. <laughs> oh man, I've like made jokes about like exiling my cat to the back porch and the, I get the hardest eye rolls from my partner. <laughs> and then she laughs because she just thinks it's funny that I'm like, she's like, you're such a nerd. <laughs> I'm like, I know. I, I do enjoy those like little in jokes with like people who play, um, being able to like make those kind of comments. Because I I posted a picture of my uh, uh, my COVID vaccine card, you know, and a friend of mine who who was also plays. I'm sure like what he said. He was like, um, uh, "Powerful magic is like a, a common." Uh, comment will make about something whether it's like sarcasm or truth and so I replied back and I was like yeah it's pretty strong but it's even stronger when you copy it uh, my my partner was not amused I mean when I say not amused I mean in like a jovial way not in a mean way she's very supportive and lets me play cards any night that I want to because I mean I'm just upstairs in the bedroom because uh, it's all virtual you know so but uh, I always find find ways to put uh, magic into things at you know the expense of the audience often <laughs> See this hand has a little bubble that appears here in the like the crook or whatever, so that's always like a thing I gotta remove. But like on the final figure, like you wouldn't even know it's there or it was there, because it's it doesn't affect, you know, the the hand itself. Faces for one month and creates a copy protection from virus. <laughs> I love it. I just made a phasing joke this morning. I'm trying to think of what it was. She didn't get she didn't get that one because phasing's you know pretty uh pretty niche. But she she played a little bit. 
Um, sometimes I can coax her into playing um, Commander, but uh, so she's got like some familiarity with like the terminology. What did I? What did I say? It was something about phasing out, and she like didn't get it, so I just let it go instead of explaining it. I was like, that's fine. You get most of the jokes. You can have the one you don't get. Nobody gets your phasing jokes, but I use it to describe basically putting away or getting rid of anything. <laughs> that's... that applies. I think I think this morning it was like we're talking about um, we have like a 12 foot um, like Intex pool and we're talking about like uh, giving it to a friend if um, we end up having to move this summer if my partner gets the one of the jobs she's applying for and because we would just buy another one and it doesn't get as hot most other places that we would potentially live. And um, I made a joke about it like phasing out and she was like, I don't understand. But she knew, she knew it was related to magic. <laughs> Cause uh, you know, that's how I roll. Phasing and banning are never gonna land. No, yeah, they're just too, uh, they're too corner case. Uh, speaking of phasing, I did see a cute um, interaction uh, posted in, there's a Facebook judge group where you can like ask questions, and uh, so I'm in that and I answer questions sometimes because I really like knowing the rules and interactions and stuff, and somebody had asked about um, that black-blue uh, Merfolk that gives, you know, you can like Encore stuff. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. Azumi. And they were like, if you have Teveri's Veil, which says, it's an enchantment that says like, whenever a creature attacks, I think it's a creature you control, it attacks, you, it phases out. And they were like, does that stop the exile trigger? And they were like, well, the exile ability still happens but the things are, are treated as though they don't exist, so there's nothing to phase out, and therefore you keep them. Um, which is pretty cool. So there's your, your phasing uh, bit for the day. I'm like... I don't, uh, I don't do combo and stuff usually, so I appreciate janky bullshit like that kind of interaction. Janky is another word that, uh, I use a lot and people don't really know what it means. Like, it's like, I think it's kind of like clear what you're saying. Well, the, the Teferi's thing says it phases out at the end of combat, so it's, like, gone, like, way before you get to that. But yeah, if they, like, happen at the same time, you could just stack them and have, like, you know, the phase happen first, so then when it tries to exile it, there's just nothing there. If I only I was as knowledgeable in the rest of my life as I am about magic, I might be in a better position. <laughs> so we'll, um, I'll give these, uh, the plugs on these things a quick sand, and then we're going to test fed them. I got my, I got my guy. I'm going to Oh, here's like another thing that I made recently. Actually, I gotta dig them out because this thing is a little too wide. I 
I made these sanding sticks. Um, so there's just different grits, and I just, I like shaped, uh, I sanded them down into like different shapes. So they're like, like knives, sort of, and then I glued on, I super glued, um, sandpaper onto them. So then it's like, because I was trying to hold paper to sand like small stuff, and it's just such a pain in the ass. Um, so this is like, much better. It's also really good for like, um, sanding like little, you know, tight areas and whatnot. Um, these like uh, vents on the top I let's see what's the left side I have to you can kind of like play with like how much you sand off to affect like how snug the fit is yeah so that fits pretty well swapping boots Dishes are done. Let's see if this one's just as good. Yeah, it's pretty good. So you can see, like, I don't know how well you can see it in the camera, but like, um, there's too much black in this and then this is just the black I, so it has like this slight bluish tint to it so I gotta try to step back how much black I use and I don't know if this stuff can even be I don't think it can be transparent so there's gonna be like a color difference here which is why I'm not trying to have like you know the boots and so this stuff's like it's gonna be different you can see it here but um so that's like a trade-off with like using these two different materials is like the one is like not totally transparent it, it ends up always like slightly white off like off white white translucent so it only gets like so um yeah this uh these arms are like tests so the inside has like some defects so this doesn't fit as snugly as it should but it's close enough. So we got, they're kind of, I don't know how well you can see them, they're like kind of smoky translucent feet you can put the hands on the feet and the feet on the hands you know you could give him you could give him four feet to make him a horse boy you be like you're gonna have there now he's He's a horsey boy. Yeah, it turned out a little nicer. I like that it's this kind of smoky gray black. He's a beautiful horsey boy. So I look through this stuff to see what I can keep. I use some of it for um, uh, to build vents and build like reservoirs and stuff. Cause like you know it's it's basically plastic garbage. So I try to see what I could potentially salvage. So I'm throwing less of it away. 
Um, I mean, I'm sure I'm going to throw it away at some point. Um, but if I can get, like, a second use out of it, then it's worthwhile. Because it's already so wasteful, you know? I, anywhere I can salvage a little bit, I try to. I have a whole, like, bin under my desk of just, like, scrap that I, um, go to when I'm making, like, extra parts or supplementary parts or whatever. Uh, building, like, the reservoirs for the inventing is probably one of the more common uses, so even, like, this thin stuff is useful. Because then I don't have to sacrifice, um, like polystyrene sheets that I would use to make something from scratch. I can just use like the scrap instead. Sabertooth. Uh, you try to figure out a way to grind or chip excess material like that to use as a filler, but I haven't seen a good solution. I've had the same thought. Um, so this is just what I do with it. I I clip and save anything that's like of a decent mass where I could potentially use it as something, even if it's a, as a starting point of another piece. And then, you know, I just box it so I have a place to, to pull from. Broken hairs. Where did that other piece go? Lose it on my hair. I think I accidentally threw it away. Whoops. Alright, uh, let's see. So, those pieces are done. I gotta wait for them to cool down. So, I'm gonna do another cast. I'm gonna cast some arms and legs to try to get. And I guess I gotta do a head also. I've got some scrap heads. I think these are arms and legs, yeah. So I've like tried to fix, um, I had some defects in this mold and I tried to fix them. I think they're fixed. The, the couple tests that I did recently have come out okay. So. Um, I was talking about the gliose joints being problematic, so these are, these being, um, teal. This is, a uh, brush on silicone, um, because these kept having air trapped in them. So I brushed this on, and you can get it to bond <clears throat> to existing silicone like this, and like this. <clears throat> so you can repair molds with it. So the, it took three passes. I cut the first ones off and remade them, and then they had problems. And I, so this is the third time, and they look pretty good. <clears throat> so I have to do. I'm just gonna run with it. Um, so in the future, I think for like anything with a gliose socket like this, and so the legs also have they have the ball joint sockets, so they're. So they've got both, I think. Yeah, so they've got a glue socket there, and then the ball socket. So this is all brush on. This one separated once, so I had to rebond it, and it's like tentatively on there. So I'm waiting to see how long before it tears off again. But for these molds where there's like a joint with like an inner inner area that's kind of difficult for um, silicone to get into. Like in the past, I would vacuum. I'd run it in a vacuum and it would usually pull it in. But even that can be problematic. 
So I think I'm just gonna use a brush on and do like a a whole coat, like a thin outer mold where the it's filled in like manually and then just pour silicone around that to create um, like an, you know, an outer like bulk mold where the detail was all captured by the brush on and then I just used the regular silicone to like fill it in. Uh, Sabretooth, yours. I sat down last night to work on my mold, discovered after applying that my AC glue had gone bad, wouldn't set. Ugh, that sucks. I've had the opposite problem where it's like, it's like a very thick gel <laughs> and um, it's basically unusable. I think these are 50 mls I use of um, rebound, not rebound, sorry, um, what's the thing, oh I forgot to put my respirator on last time, whoops, um, 60D. that was the problem. Never seen it go bad. Oh, to the point of not curing. Yeah, I've never seen that either. That's really weird. And really unfortunate because it was probably a huge pain in the ass to remove. Put that off to the side. That's totally cured, isn't it? So this stuff, like, this is the task. It kind of needs to be vacuumed. That's like the one downside of it. Um, or not vacuumed. I'm sorry. Uh, pressurized. Because you can kind of see it's like. It's like okay on the outside, but there's a lot of air bubbles, like right under the surface. Hopefully I can just try gluing again over the same spots. Yeah, uh, I just, I don't know enough about TA glue that if it would like react strangely, you know, or if, um, or not. Uh, let's see, 60D. 60D, we're almost out of you. So we twenty five a piece. And then we'll use a bigger vessel to mix it. Yeah, well hopefully it goes it works out for you because that sounds like a really shit situation. So twenty five there. 25 there. I always use the like larger, more shallow one for the one I gotta mix the color in. Less luck be I'm gonna spill it everywhere.
my dirty rags. Um, so what is this? It's going to be, this has to be black also. As ever flowed last time. Let's go. Um, where's my thing? A little bit. It's probably too much. Well, this is going to be like um, slight, kind of opaque though, so that probably doesn't really matter. similar to the other batch, so we'll see how close it comes out in color. And once I get this on the tank, I'll s I think the other ones should be cooled down enough that I can open them. So that should be, should be fun. They should be good now, I just gotta wait for them to hit like room temperature again. happy with it. I mean, there's like, you know, a couple air bubble flaws in it, but it was really just a test to see if like, I was mostly wondering if um, the, if it would flex enough that I could like put it over the, the shoulder joints and like that worked. So I was like, oh, the air bubbles are no big deal. Like I'll fix that. I was like, I took them a little apart like when I first separated it and I was like a little worried it wasn't gonna like come out and I was like well if it doesn't come out of the mold without like you know bending in half then um this clearly is a flawed design but it worked out so I was pretty happy about that sorry I'm just like um triple checking what I gotta do here so this should be good Yeah, I still want to do um, some sculpting on that. I want to add some detail and then like a like a some kind of chest emblem or something. Like I could probably get away with with doing it just the way it is, but like in my mind, there's like you know an emblem or something on the front. I'm just not really even sure what that is yet. I'm still kind of kicking some ideas around. I think 50 is enough. Always unsure. Upper leg 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40. Yeah, 50 should be enough. They're all like 10 to 12 mLs a piece. So I need this and the black one. 
to mix it. We need a towel to clean out the syringe, which will be this. Alright, that should be good. Are the straps a uniform thickness? They're, um, here, I can... I, I broke the original, taking it out of the mold. So I was like, hopefully this works, because if it doesn't, um, it's not like fully uh, cleaned. But they're like, roughly, they're about, what, a millimeter, two millimeters? It's a little thin right there, a little thicker there. I tried to get it as close as I could. Um, you can kind of see there. It like does vary a little bit, but I tried to like eyeball it. So it was a lot of a lot of layers of um, epoxy sculpt on top of you know wire mesh, and I just like would sand it. I would add more wire or more epoxy sculpt, sand it, add more sand it to try to like get the um, the thickness evened out. Um, you can see there's like if you can see through the the armor. Oh, it's too low. Sorry. Um, there's a little bit of like thinness there. Um, like, kind of along this center line, but it's not thick. It's not thin enough that you're gonna like puncture it. I mean, unless you really try, then you know, you do what you want. You bought it. <laughs> yeah, I tried to get as like even of a thickness as I could, so you can kind of see it like on the back. I was like, well, if this doesn't work, then I guess I have to figure out the, the, the like, buckle straps. And I'm just glad it worked out, because I really didn't want to do that. I was like, that is way more work than I want to put into this. thing once I get this stuff in the in the tank um, a little tool I made to uh, measure the fit on that thing like as I was sculpting it because it was like it, it was rigid um, it was rigid epoxy sculpt like I couldn't I couldn't like bend it to, to test fit it onto the figure but if you planned thicker and thinner parts as flex and even break points where if it does break, it doesn't render it unusable. Um, that's a good idea. I I had planned to cast it in 60D so it does it would have flex so that it, you know you couldn't like if I used even task and you bend it too much, it's just gonna snap in half. Um, but like this 60D. It's got like it, it this like this thin, it's got a good amount of flux, so you can see how much I can bend this thing. So it's like kind of similar to the vintage stuff, where like you know it's like this, it's not like rubber, but it's like this like soft flexible plastic. So I was like I was pretty confident that the 60D would work the way that I wanted it to, and. I'm like really happy, really happy with like how it turned out. Like the downside is I have to paint it, you know, because it's all one color. So if I want these to be brown or whatever, I have to hand paint them. So it's just a trade-off, you know, to like, because the the vintage stuff was all just a single color, and most of it wasn't painted at all. So whatevs. So like, um, another thought I had was, I bought, oh, hang on, let's double check that. 
I bought um, Flex at 70 from Specialty Resin. And I goofed up when I was like looking at all the stats for it. I was thinking it, it was a 70, so it was, it'd be a little bit harder than 60D. Because I thought about replacing 60D with that so that I would have like a little less flex on the arms and legs. And so I would get like a better fit with the, because I would try to get close to the PVC, you know. And it's like, you can't really do it with resin. You can like kind of approximate it, but it's not going to be like the same. Uh, when you paint, check out plaid FX paints they made of, for foam cosplay armor and should take flexing well. Crafts paint FX. That's good to know. Um, so, there's another thing that I had read, and I, I might have told you, Sabretooth. Um, I can't remember who I was telling about it. Um, maybe it was just my partner. I don't remember. So, I read this thing. I don't even remember where I read it. Um, but it was recent and it had to do with um, injection molding. So like, you know, metal molds, thermoplastic, all that. And um, so what I had read was someone was asking about paint application, you know, and um, uh, durability and, and all that. And so someone had said that you can if you paint the inside of the mold with acrylic paint, um, and then, you know, do your injection casting or whatever, that the heat causes the acrylic paint to bond with the, the material that's being injected. It like molecularly bonds it. So then, um, you know, it's no longer just a surface coating. It's like the surface of the thing. And so I, I plan to test that and then post my results to, you know, Instagram or the Discord or whatever. And I just haven't had, I haven't gotten to a point where I, I was able to test it because I'm trying to get other stuff like knocked out. Yeah, okay, it was you I talked about it with. Yeah, so I still need to try that and see what the results are like and see if it's like viable or not for resin. It might be, but like, you know, like you're saying, it might require like a higher temp than the resin generates. So it's kind of a, you know, an, an unknown. So I wanted to run some tests on it and report back and see, you know, what I found. Because if that works, it's like, it's still like labor intensive, right? Because you've got to like take this extra step um, on your mold, you know? And uh, so I'm not sure like how it would work out. So I didn't want to really like, you know, suggest to people and gifts, you know, like create work for other people who like maybe aren't quite ready to take on the potential frustration of it like failing. Um, let's see, uh, that's primed, I have everything I need here, I got the cleaner, sorry, I just gotta like triple check before I do this, cause like, it, then I would know like, you know, I wouldn't say definitively, but I would have more like, I, you know, ran this, 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 and this test, and these are my results, and, um, you know, at least have some like useful information other than like I heard this thing on the internet because I, I was like well I need to I need to prioritize like finishing this hair sculpt getting that stuff molded you know finish the parts I'm trying to make and then I can worry about you know running these like external tests that aren't, you know, directly impactful to the thing I'm trying to do. Uh, wondering if the wrong silicone might degrade it fast. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, acrylic is, um, I mean, I don't know anything about it. its chemical makeup, you know, but, uh, it seems like it's, the most 
I don't want to say flexible. That sounds dumb. Um, I don't know. Friendly paint. I went into a hobby store recently looking for enamels to uh, practice using with my um, shitty airbrush that I bought. And the guy was like, yeah, basically nobody makes acrylics or uh, not acrylics, I'm sorry. Uh, enamels anymore. Everything's acrylic. And he was like, there's a couple. Tamiya makes some some kind of like uh, they call it an, an uh, acrylic enamel and you can like mix it with an enamel. I think it was an enamel thinner or an enamel uh, clear coat or something. Basically it's just like chemically compatible with uh, acrylic. So you could like, it gave you more like mixing options. And um, he was like, there's like one company, which like, I don't remember because I don't know enough about like hobby model paint. Because this was predominantly like an RC and uh, like tabletop gaming model kit store. So he didn't have like, you know, it wasn't, it was just targeted at that, at that like market. Um, so he didn't really have, you know, know anything about like, well, how does it work with resin? Is it, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Um, inert paint, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what to say to that. <clears throat> I, I guess it's inert. I don't really know. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I don't really know about. I'm more like a, I'm gonna do the thing and try to document it and, you know, go from there. I think that's mostly full. This is... Shit. I think that's gonna run short. I don't wanna be short, come on. Well, looks like I underestimated again. So we're probably gonna get two legs and one arm. And half an arm. I should have raised it ten. Have gone up 10 mls because it looks like I'm only going to get one more piece out of this. Yeah, I don't think it's even worth shooting this side, but I guess I will anyway. salvage enough of this. Probably not. Nope. Alright. Well, that means I need more. More for next time. Try to slop this in here and see if it'll be enough. Probably not. I'm still trying to work out the numbers of like how much I need for each of these. So I'm not short. All right, it's starting to thicken up. We gotta get it in the in the tank, and this will just be whatever it's gonna be. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm just gonna waste that time. Alright, so that needs probably another. So it's gonna be 60 arms and legs. I have to make a note of that so I don't forget. Red's doing the next charge is ketchup, so no resin or ketchup, we're all screwed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if I should stock up on resin. I can't really afford to stock up on it, but I guess I'll use the other side. It's probably cleaner. Uh, you're done. Be quiet. Ketchup is one thing I don't really eat. I mean, it's like fine. It's just never a thing I like want. It's like, uh, oh, there's no other condiments, not even like mayo. I guess I'll put ketchup on it. Funny that ketchup's like the, a thing that's gonna have a shortage. What a what a strange world. Yeah, bigger black market demand. Give me that ketchup. Now you'll see a rise in mommy bloggers. They're like, here's my recipe for ketchup. It's all organic. It only costs you $20 to make six ounces of ketchup. If you get everything from Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, if y'all shop at those places. Twenty dollars is not the goop approved recipe. Yeah, right. It's the uh, the bargain basement version. You're not using real cats in your cats up. Get out of here. Then it's not real. Now with less less uh, up and more cats. Speaking of cats, my. Dirty, dirty cat. One of my dirty cats just showed up in the room. Hopefully he doesn't decide to jump up in my face. The DIY ketchup recipes have already started showing up on sites. Do it yourself. Make everything at home. No. <laughs> Some things aren't worth the effort. There's, there's a lot of sludge in this stuff. I really need to swap it out. I was like 
because I, I use alcohol so much for like cleaning everything. I was like really annoyed at the beginning of the pandemic um, because of the shortage of alcohol. I was like, how am I going to make my toys if I can't get any alcohol? Because that's the most important thing. Alright, sounds good, man. Thanks for stopping by. Alright, uh, I think we can close this one off. at the end of its life. Oops. Well, other than the head, I'll have made a whole figure today, which is pretty cool. I'm still gonna make like uh, another test cast of the armor. So I got the armor, the head. Um, I don't know what the color of the sword's gonna be. I feel like it should be the grip is black and the the handle is red or the blade is red. I'm gonna go for that lightsaber adjacent look. Cleaning everything. But will the joy never end? Come on, Twitch, and watch this asshole clean his tools for 20 minutes. Fun! exciting television. I really need like a more rigid version of this. I guess that works too. I'm just going from the front. So that should be good. Cleaning this stuff up, I should be able to pull or open those um, open those molds. So if you're st anyone still hanging around, interested to see that, I can finally, I think I can probably yank them. to get to a point where I can have uh, multi-part molds where there's like, you know, two or three of a part in there so I can be a little bit more time efficient, but that's also more work in making those molds. And it, it's its own complications too, because um, I, I wouldn't connect them. I don't think that's a good idea. I think like some of the other molds I've got here where it would just be 
they would be side by side and you would just one 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 like in the as you cast it i don't think trying to connect them and have it all flow together is gonna be is uh a great idea i think it'll cause cause problems because then if you've got one point where like the resin flows in and any of that gets like jammed or um it has like airflow issues it's gonna fuck the whole thing and then that mold is like wasted so i think just having three molds in the same or three separate molds in the same block <clears throat> is uh probably a bit better <clears throat> and i was actually thinking about doing it with like um doing the like halves of them separate and then combining them in like one block it sounds a little confusing, but um, I don't know how to just do it and see how it works out. There's so many different like engineering angles I have to consider when I'm doing this. That's like part of the challenge though, is can I overcome those um, obstacles? And it feels pretty good when you do. It's like, hey, I'm not as dumb as I thought I was. Alright, those are mostly good. So put this stuff away. Put these away. these molds, see how they came out. Not those, I need the, the ones that are cooled. So these things are mostly cooled, so they should be good for um, pulling. Alright, so we'll work backward. Just in case. Go with the other, the bigger ones a little time. A little extra time to cool because they're just a little warm still. I'd rather err on the side of caution than pop them too early and break them. But this is like rigid as hell, so that's they're fine. So these should be good. This particular mold is a little poorly designed. Um, that's uh, my fault. So, I'll <clears throat> I plan on re redesigning this pelvis anyway. Um, there's some quality of life improvements I want to make to it. So that um, it's a little easier to actually. I know what I did before. Yeah, to break this thing off. That helps a little bit. So I can pull up on that. I. I molded this where like it's kind of backwards so instead of the part being attached to this and then I pull the part off of that 
I get this bright idea in my head because of like the way the thing is shaped. I'm like, what if I do it like this? So, ugh. Doesn't matter. So set that aside. Because it's like, you know, now the part's in here and I have to pry it out. Which is, um... It's also, us. it was supposed to be red. Uh, but like everything else, it's, you know, it's black today. So, there's just gonna be... There's gonna be some extra parts. So I gotta pry this off and then... See that right there? That's the problem is this middle part. Okay. Because of this piece, it can be... If this gets warped, then it doesn't fit together right. Um, it looks like it's okay. It's like pretty straight. Because I, when I first made this mold, this uh, bent a couple of times and then it also broke so that's the thing I'm going to engineer out of this I'm going to replace this with a metal rod so the figure kit will come with a metal rod that you'll put in instead of having this plastic piece here so it'll just be stronger overall it'll be easier to mold easier to cast uh, the metal rod will provide stronger support for the figure like for the the Y part, so you don't have to worry about that breaking off. But it just requires, like, taking the time to refactor the mold and redo it. Which is, you know, a time investment, so. Alright, so we'll pull this guy. We're gonna have to cut this off. If you want more durability, durability task is pretty strong. I mean, it will break. Like this, this peg will break if you put enough pressure on it. Um, but overall, it's it's a pretty strong resin. fins it should have been turned backwards there's a lot of mistakes I made with this particular mold um, but it's working well enough so I'm gonna just get as much life out of it as I can because it exists and see how long I can go before I have to retire it A lot of flash on this. That's I don't I don't love that. It feels sloppy to me. For me, by me. I would hope it goes without saying, but my criticisms of my own work are not and will never be uh, a criticism of anyone else's work. I can indict myself all day. So to remove this, I'll clip this vent.
This will come off. Well, it should anyway. There. And then I can just pull this out. good. I'll look for flashing later. It's not baked clay. All this flashing is garbage. And all this stuff is garbage. That's usable scrap. This is the Y part. Thing's always a little bit of a pain in the ass to remove. So those three pegs. This is another another mold I'd redesign. I think it would be a three-part mold where it would have it would be the same body like the two part and then it would go into a sock. So I would put it together, put it in, cause then I could pull the whole thing out and just separate it and I wouldn't have to struggle with it. I'll probably do the same with these, but once I remove this peg and go to the metal rod, it'll be a lot easier. But that's uh, a later iteration. Same thing, we'll chop this off here. Well, I guess I gotta punch puncture through that before I can get under it. So we'll do this. That little screwdriver is another tool that I use a lot. It's just like a versatile little I've sculpted with it, I use it to demold. Pretty good overall. Don't see any excess flashing left over. That's garbage. There's a little bit in here, but I can clean that up later. Um, typically, with this, I'll have to use like a tool to remove these. Something like this. Just gotta push them through. I try not to mar them, but it's, that's the other reason I, I want to replace them with um, metal rods is I can put a little more pressure on them and not worry about banging them up. Because these need to be, I gotta make sure like all the, <clears throat> fortunately the resin doesn't stick to these, which is really convenient. <clears throat> so I can just reset them. And put them back in the mold. Okay, that's that. 
So the real parts are these. This is all excess. So now the real, the real money. had a lot of leakage around the sides. I think it's just how soft the silicone is. contained in the mold is real good. Um, I've talked about this a little bit before, but these, uh, this mold design is, uh, it's a attempt at a solution to reduce, well, or in this case eliminate um, leaks because when I did the run of figures over the summer, spring, I every time I cast, I had to wrap the mold in, like, I had to wrap the whole thing, every seam, every, like, opening in uh, packing tape to prevent it from leaking, because they were just regular two-part molds. Um, and I went through like a roll and a half of tape and then I'm throwing all that away afterward so I didn't love that either so I was like I need to come up with a mold design that contains all the seams so that it doesn't leak Sock molds were born. And so far, I mean, there's like some uh, iterative learning with like your designs. You gotta, because each mold is a little different. So I have to kind of adapt the design a little bit. And like I was pointing out with the three molds I just opened, like there's flaws in those three because I I made this these molds first with the, to these torsos and so I didn't really know what I was doing, I just had like an idea so I made some not great choices uh, on design on, the, on a few of these but by doing that, I learned like what worked and what didn't, um, so I could iterate on it later. You know, when I have time, or when it's like the, the time is right. Ouch! And uh, you know, make a better design. So I use this to like um, go under a, like where it's thicker, where these these pins are. Shit, I like cut part of the mold. The silicone's too soft too; it tears really easily. So I thought I just imagined this was going to be a test. I did not expect to be like putting this into you know essentially production. Nice. 
I would not use these pegs again as keys. Um, they're too hard to align. Which, which ends up causing leaks. The dots um, with the hot glue are good enough. They, they key together pretty well. And they like slide apart. You see how they were pushed down, which caused all this leakage. So they're they're like flawed already, just because of like how um, they stick up too far. I thought they would be clever, and they ended up being a bad idea. So I haven't done that since. All right, last one for the day. Oh, I got the arms and legs. They're still chilling in the mold. I don't even know what time I put them in at. <clears throat> I think it's only got a 30 minute cure, so it's faster than task. Yeah, I can just push this out. Sometimes pulling these molds is a little, a little bit of a headache. They're not optimal. They work, but they're they could use some improvement. There we go. Ow, shit, man, this resin is sharp. Holy crap. Checking for flashing. I may have gotten big chunks of may have gotten left behind. Okay. That's good. So the first mold where I <clears throat> put this cross on as a, as a vent and it worked pretty well. I'm pretty happy about that. Some of this flash. 
the thin stuff. I'll, I'll do all the tabs later. Guys, mono black today. No Rakdos figures being made today. Trying to see what I can peel off versus what I have to cut off. Usually, if I can peel it, it doesn't require much in the in the way of um, cleanup. Just like us. Usually, if you can, if I can peel it off, then cleanup is like a quick pass with an Exacto or something or a razor blade, and just to get like the little burrs and stuff off. And smooth out the edge, but if I'm cutting it off, it's usually a little thicker, so I gotta I'll have to go back, go over it with um, sandpaper, and do a little bit of cleanup in that way. Let's see this; it's all like through here, so I'm just gonna break it. I'm trying not to snap this piece off because. It would make doing this easier, but I'm, I'm going to take a a picture of this stuff like more or less straight out of the mold with like minor trimming, leaving all the major venting and stuff in place. Um, some I have to cut off to get it out of the mold, and that's unavoidable. I just thought people might be interested in seeing what they look like straight out of the mold. Prettified. I'm trying to be better about not holding everything up to my face so that it's visible on camera. Trimming always takes a little longer than I would like. So try to improve um, like the fit of the mold and all that. It reduces cleanup time, which is, you know, every minute you can save is, is good. Or cut off, really. Good. 
it's got most of its general cleanup done. There's like a defect in this thing right there. I feel like I need another reason to remake that mold. That's the white part, that's the pelvis. That's the torso. I don't know which side is the better side to, to photograph because like you can't really see too much like top down looking at it that way. We'll just do that. This is all scrapola. I'm gonna drain the tank. It might be a little bit loud. See what our defect arm looks like. I'm sure, it's like half an arm. Let's look at that damage first. This stuff should all be mostly okay because they're thicker pieces. Out of the stuff is done. Yeah, see, this is like incomplete. I mean, I knew that was going to happen. Sad panda. Definitely. One, two, three. Yeah, five. Like, probably eight ml short. So I have to go up to um, 60 for the arms and legs. Just need to make a note. Okay, so let's pull this and see what it looks like. This is what I'm most curious about. This is still slightly soft, but it'll be okay. Oh, it is a little too soft. I probably should leave it in the mold, to be honest. I mean, the one arm is shot, so there's not like a lot of incentive to leave it in there. That's all of them. Nope. There we go. This junk. Oh, at least it all came out as one piece. Instead of having to fish out every little chip of it. So we got one good arm, one trash arm. I really want to see this fit. That's what I'm, I'm most interested in. Yeah, 
be honest, it just needs baked. It's uh, it's too soft right now. It shouldn't be this flexible. So the test fit's gonna have to wait till later. I mean, it should be better. I mean, it can't be worse. So that's like positive. And this is uh, just gonna go into the scrap bin as a fodder piece to be used as uh, a sculpt base or something else. So that's all trash. Sorry, these legs don't take out. So I guess I got one more, one more treat to, to open. It's like Christmas. So there's our legs. A little bit of flash junk here. Nothing major. So let's set that guy aside. So these are still a little soft, so um, I probably I should bake them first, but I'm not going to. I can I can post bake them loose if I really need to. tricky part pulling these guys without tearing off the peg. Got it. I'm 
almost no flashing on those, which is pretty awesome. So we got a trash arm, a good arm, two good legs, and everything else is looking pretty hot. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. That's what we got for the day. Put this a little closer to the camera. Hey, Dustin Strawberries, how's it going? I'm just about done. You jumped on just at the right time. So I, I cast all this stuff today. This is a, I, re, I didn't have enough resin, so I miscalculated my amount, so this guy's, he's a little stumpy. We'll just save him for later. Let's see, i to clean up my mess a little bit here. Yeah, a couple of the, the other guys were around for a while, uh, Downer Energy and uh, Suki hung out for a bit. Um, I did some sculpting on, uh, on this guy, oh shit, he fell over, so I'm like still working on the hair, broke some strands off, so that's like super fun, all the yellow stuff is all epoxy sculpt, so I'm trying to start building out like the, the body of it, so that's like a work in progress, um, yeah, and then I uh, cast all the stuff. So I'm going to start trying to get, like, um... Hey, thanks. Um, I mean, they, they all need, like, some improvement. Um, these, these molds are, like, good, but they're, you know, they have some issues. Oh, I, spell, I'm, I cast this stuff, too. Sorry, it was all off to the side. So, other than the head... And this arm being incomplete, this is like just a, a complete base figure. So, we're getting there slow. I, I was like, I gotta start making like actual stuff for like release, you know? Because all I had was a bunch of test stuff. I guess you can't quite see everything. Let me move this mat a little bit. Uh, sorry, I like was trying to position it. It sucks because I'm looking at the camera like off to the side. That's a little bit better, yeah. So, um, I'm gonna post a picture of it. Yeah, uh, the hair's been a real challenge. But it's a learning experience, you know? I'm, like, learning how to sculpt that. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to work in more, like, you know, new stuff with each thing. So this was, like, a big jump. I went from just the base figure to, like, the armor, the sword, the he a new face the hair, like, you know, there were like four new parts I was making, so it was like, it was really a lot to take on, I probably should have like, you know, kept it tempoed a little, and uh, just done a couple things instead of going hog and trying to do it all, but I wanted to like, have the next release be something like, even cooler, but it's getting close to that time, I usually, uh, I try to stream for like four hours, so usually around six I try to wrap it up, um, but uh, I'm going to post some stuff on Instagram, and then I'll be, like, you know, around in the Discord or whatever. So if you want to DM or something, or we can talk there. But, um, yeah, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 2 to 4 is, or 2 to 6, sorry, is, like, the schedule I'm trying to stick to. So, um, you know, if you, like, have the time to stop by, cool. And, you know, we can chat nerd stuff. So, uh... I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it here, and you know I'll see you in the Discord if you're gonna be around. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on Wednesday.